Hey uh, folks, so welcome back. I want to talk about batteries again. I know, I talk about batteries a lot. What? Probably thinking when the hell does this guy ever shut up about batteries, but you know what? Damn it, they're fascinating technology and I like doing research and I like reading about them because it's just amazing how they work. I mean, think about how much power you could just cram in this little itty bitty thingy and you know, you can run computers off of it. It's it, whatever. Anyway, I do want to talk about these eventually, but that's not the main purpose of this video. I went out and bought one of these bad boys. Um, now, of course, I actually bought this way back in, um, I don't know, either January or February or something. And I've been testing it. I've been playing with it. I'm at, I actually put this video off quite a long time because I wanted to uh, present... I want to talk about this battery and have some data to actually back it up. So this battery is from um, a store called Batteries Plus, and let me bring that up a little. Open up my frame here, and um, it's it's a little pricey. Now I'm sure you've seen the aftermarket batteries that look something like this from all the different stores, from anywhere from three to four dollars to ten to fifteen dollars, and then you see this thing from Batteries Plus. And it's like, I don't know, I think I think I paid like 18 bucks for it. I have a store pretty local, so I didn't really have to pay shipping. Um, they just shipped it to the, to the store. That was free, and then I went to the store and picked it up. Now, of course, this was before all the quarantine stuff. Um, had I picked this up after COVID-19, I would have just had it shipped straight to me. But nonetheless, you get it. It doesn't, you know, it doesn't look fantastic. This is obviously generic packaging, and even though it is a game device battery. Um, I mean, you can see straight on the battery that it is for a Game Boy Advance SP, even though it does not say that anywhere on the packaging or on the battery. If you know what a Game Boy Advance SP battery looks like, you know it's for a Game Boy Advance SP. And not a DS if you look at the, uh, the tabs on it, but we'll get to those later. Um, so I did already do quite a bit of testing on this battery itself because like I said you know it's not that much fun just looking at some guy opening up some generic packaging and uh, throwing batteries at himself so this is what you get uh, it does come with a little plastic wrap and I did already remove it like I said to test it and even though this battery I'm gonna bring this down again Oops. even though this battery shows that it is 880 milliamp hours I actually tested it and I only measured about 794 milliamp hours. So I think it's safe to say this is approximately an 800 milliamp hour battery. Now, maybe it's just the one I bought. I only bought one because these things are fucking expensive and I'm not gonna buy five for this video. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Um, but, you know, your mileage may vary. And, you know, I, I, I kinda wanna talk about my sample size real quick because it's very important I only tested one battery. Now, I may have gotten a lemon. I may have gotten one of the good ones. I can't know that without testing other batteries. So, you know, just take this with a grain of salt. Anyway, tested it at 794 milliamp hours. When I popped it in my charger, it had a storage charge of 3.85 volts, which is phenomenal. That is exactly what it should be for a storage charge. Well, I suppose it should be just a hair lower for a storage charge, but that's fine. It's close enough. Um, and I tested it in this Game Boy Advance SP in particular. Now this one is modded with an IPS screen. Um, in all fairness, it is modded with a Game Boy Advance IPS screen instead of the Game Boy Advance SP version, but I figured it's good enough for testing. I tested all of the batteries in the same Game Boy, so that should be pretty irrelevant. But, you know, instead of just coming at you saying, I tested this battery at 800 milliamp hours. I actually did some runtime um, calculate, well, not calculations. I sat here, I on my desk, I set up a camera, did a time lapse, um, everything. I captured the whole footage of just trying to run through the battery, trying to see, okay, this is 800 milliamp hours. The SPU runs at about 55 milliamps. Um, you know, what is that? What does that mean for actual battery life? And on this battery just running a loop of the Pokemon Emerald title screen. Um, this SP lasted about nine hours and uh, six minutes before it shut off. 
and I did already put a couple cycles on this battery before I tested it, so it should have been broken in or whatever. Um, I do, I have noticed that sometimes batteries, you know, you need to put a couple cycles on them before they, you know, start giving you consistent results. Uh, e even if they're used and they've just, uh, you know, you haven't used them in a while. Uh, but yeah, first thing I did, I charged it up, um, ran it all the way down, charged it back up, ran it all the way down, charged it back up. And then I did a um, capacity test and that's when I got 794. Then I charged it all the way back up in the SP and uh, did the test. And like I said, about nine hours, six minutes. Now, I did the exact same thing with one of these batteries. Uh, this is the mod battery that I did a little while back with the custom PCB. Just solder it to the PCB, drop it in there. Uh, I actually ran this battery through my tester as well. And this one, even though this is 900 milliamp hours, that's 20 milliamp hours more, uh, it tested at 837. So not quite as high, but, you know, still pretty decent. And keep in mind, again, I just tested the one. Now, I do have another battery that I use inside another Game Boy Advance SP, and, you know, I'm actually using it, and I'm getting decent runtime. You know, nothing that makes me suspicious of the capacity. Um, but, again, I didn't test this one. I tested that one. And, uh, you know, it is a little bit higher. And keep in mind the price. I built three of these for the cost of this. Um, what I say? It was 837 milliamp hours. The runtime test for this machine was 9 hours and 50, as in 5-0 minutes. And now, keep in mind, this is for a modded Game Boy Advance SP. I did some power calculations, um, you know, compared it to stock versus the kit. And, you know, again, all of these tests are just running through the demo loop. Um, so actual usage might vary, and they're all at the default brightness. So if you lower the brightness, you'll get better battery life. If you raise the brightness, you'll get worse battery life. But compared to stock, I measured that this kit reduces the battery life by about 45%. So if you were to just take this battery or this battery in a stock SP, um, I guess an AGS-001, you could expect about 16 hours and 30 minutes versus about 17 hours and 50, as in five zero minutes. So still, again, quite a bit more capacity, a little bit of work required, but it's honestly, I, it's such an easy mod, I think. Um, and yeah, I, it, that's basically all I've got for this battery. Um, I don't really wanna take this apart because it's very well packaged and I don't think I think I'll ruin this sticker if I take it apart, but I just want to see, you know, is there any protection in here? What kind of cell that did they use? All that sort of stuff. But I actually, this thing does come with a one year warranty per the packaging. And I actually kind of want to test that. You know, if this battery shits out in less than a year, I'm going to see if I can't get it replaced. Um, and that will probably require me to keep it intact. Um, but, I mean, if y'all want to buy one and take it apart, it's really, in the grand scheme of things, it's not that expensive. But I'm trying to do a long-term test with this thing here. Uh, so I'm going to try and not modify this uh, as hard as that is for someone like me. But that's okay. So ultimately, my, my verdict, um, if you want to get the maximum battery life, you don't really want to do any mods. Yeah, sure. This is a great, this is a fantastic battery. Uh, it's branded Rayovac, but apparently you can only get it from Batteries Plus. And I'll I'll throw a link. Um, I think it was like seventeen or eighteen bucks or something. They're they're still selling them. And as far as I can tell, this is a relatively recently manufactured cell, unlike something like this that came out of your Game Boy Advance SP that was made in two thousand three or two thousand four or whenever. No date code on this, so it's hard to say. Oh wait, yeah, there is. Oh, yeah, but I don't know what that means. It just says Y8 AMK30. Anyway, 
I did, uh, while I had the tripod out, while I was running the uh, tests on these two batteries, I figured, hey, let's let's get some numbers for some other consoles. Just, you know, see what the heck's, you know, try and get some context for some of the other numbers. So just out of curiosity, I also ran this battery. Now this is an OEM battery. Um, this came with the Game Boy Advance SP. Uh, I don't remember what Game Boy this was in, but of all of the batteries that I have, this one tested the best. This is an original 600 milliamp hour battery. I tested it at 567 milliamp hours. So in this Game Boy, run in the exact same loop, same brightness, uh, I tested about six hours and 48 minutes. So these two do offer quite a significant improvement in battery life, but this still really isn't that bad. Um, finally, I did some other tests uh, with some other Game Boys here, and I forgot to prepare for this video and actually get that Game Boy out, so I'll just have to lay an overlay, overlay on the screen. But I tested my, um, my AGS-101 modded Game Boy Advance, not IPS, just, you know, the original Game Boy Advance style screen, kind of like these, even though this is a... One or a zero zero one. It was one oh one mod. Anyway, uh, I tested that. I have that thing modded with a two thousand milliamp hour battery, and uh, I say quote unquote because I didn't actually test the capacity on that battery. I did test another one that I have, and that one tested as low as one thousand four hundred milliamp hours. But I think that one. I don't think that's representative of the battery cells that I normally use. Uh, but anyway, I ran that one. And off of that battery, that console ran for 20 hours and 51 minutes. Two zero hours, five one minutes. Uh, it ran for an absurdly long time, so it just goes to show that if you want maximum battery life and you have an IPS mod, um, you're barking up the wrong tree. Uh, also, I did take one of these aftermarket batteries uh, probably this one, yep. Uh, and I ran this one in the Game Boy Advance SP. Same SP, same setup as before, same game, same everything. 364 milliamp hours, that nets you a whopping 2 hours and 50 minutes. So, if you want a battery, they do work. Yeah, but it's not great. Um... Now granted, 364 milliamp hours is not great. I mean, especially since these things say they're 850. Clearly not. But it is what it is. As long as you don't spend too much on these things, it's all right. But again, we'll come back to that. I keep getting ahead of myself here. Um, I also ran a couple tests on the Game Boy Micro. I figured, you know, hey, it'd be pretty neat to see the actual runtime on this, and I was actually putting this video off. Um, even though I gathered the runtime data, I was not able to test the capacity on this battery or test the actual power usage of the Micro, uh, mostly because I don't want to start soldering into this battery connector, and I don't have battery connectors. So, um, I mean, unless I take apart that other battery I made, but I wasn't really feeling that. So ultimately what I did, I ran three different tests and I'm throwing out the first test because two of the three Game Boys that I ran during that test, um, the results are just way off compared to the other two tests. So that's something that I was trying to allude to in the beginning of the video. You know, you want to make sure you pay attention to um, the sample size because there's, you know, there could be something off. I want to try and run tests as many times as possible. For instance, the first time I ran this Game Boy, it only got me about four hours and eight minutes. And, I mean, that, that seemed about right for a Game Boy Micro. I mean, these things don't get fantastic battery life. But I ran it two more times, and the next time it got six hours, 17 minutes, and the time after that, six hours and two minutes. So I think six and some change is more representative of what my 
what battery life my Game Boy Micro runs at. Now, I had that battery cover off for a reason, and I forgot to get to it. Um, and so, six hours on a 460 milliamp hour battery. And again, I haven't tested the actual capacity. I don't know. Um, event I do have some battery connectors in the mail on the way to me, and I will uh, I'll test it eventually. I'll, I'll probably update the video description and uh, throw that in there. So check the video description eventually, and I'll probably have that in there if if I ever get the right connectors. Hopefully the the right connectors. I don't know. I don't I don't have them yet. Um, anyway, in that test, I also tested uh, a Game Boy Color IPS mod versus a Game Boy Advance IPS mod. Uh, but instead of running a Game Boy Advance game, I had it running a Game Boy Color game. So I had the same quote unquote game in both consoles running side by side to see, you know, hey, if you're playing Game Boy Color, does it make more sense to play on a Game Boy Color or a Game Boy Advance? And again, I, I threw out the first result because it was just way off compared to the others. Um, like I said, I think sometimes you just need to put a few cycles on a battery before you start getting reliable results. And I quite frankly don't play this one that much. So that's that's probably why that was messed up. But I tested the uh, Game Boy Color and the Game Boy Advance with a pair of Ikea Lotta batteries. And these things are 2,450 milliamp hours. Now it's important to remember that this is 2,450 milliamp hours at 1.2 volts, um, which is different. Yeah, there it is. 1.2 volt, 2,450 milliamp hours. It's important to note that that's different than say 850 milliamp hours at 3.7 volts. You gotta calculate the watt hours of these batteries to get the uh, true, um, I guess to, to get a value that makes any sense. Um, but anyway, I keep getting ahead of myself, I'm sorry. Back to the data. So the Game Boy Color, on the second and third run, I got 15 hours and two minutes and 14 hours and 57 minutes. So I think 15 hours is a pretty damn good uh, average for that. Uh, and that was running Pokemon Gold or Pokemon Silver. I don't, I don't know, it's, it'll be up on the screen so you'll be able to correct me. And then the Game Boy Advance running right next to it I got 11 hours and 2 minutes and 10 hours and 56 minutes. And I swapped the batteries back and forth. So this pair was in the Game Boy Color on the first test, then it was in the Game Boy Advance on the second test, then the Game Boy Color in the third test. And same thing here, I swapped them back and forth. So my two tests that I'm counting, I'm not counting the first test, the two tests that I'm counting were each on different sets of batteries, and I got the same results with each, so we can rule out a bad set of batteries. That being said, for Game Boy Color games, it makes more sense to play on a Game Boy Color, I think. And last but not least, I took a Game Boy Advance with an IPS mod and put it side by side with a Game Boy Advance with the AGS 101 mod, and this Game Boy, this 101 mod, doesn't use a lithium-ion battery. This is again with IKEA Lattas, and I'm throwing them everywhere. And oops, the IPS modded Game Boy Advance only lasted about 11 hours, but the Lotta, uh, excuse me, the AGS 101 modded Game Boy Advance, that thing lasted me 21 hours 24 minutes before the batteries finally died. And again, these were the same batteries that I'd already tested in the Game Boy Color. Game Boy Advance determined they had the same capacity, or at least close enough that it doesn't matter. And I got 10 more hours out of just the older style screen. So there, there's a little bit of context for your, uh, for the battery numbers that I've been, uh, that I've been measuring. And I'll post a link to my, um, my spreadsheet that I've compiled with all the numbers that I've gathered and I'll try and update it with the actual run times that I measured as well, just because I think that'll be a little bit more helpful for, for battery modding in general. Now, I'm pretty much done with the data presentation of the video. Now it's time for me to get into my rant present, my, my rant, what's the word I'm looking for? 
whatever, it doesn't matter. You know what I'm you know what I'm getting at. So I got some comments on the video where I did this mod where oh you should just use a Nintendo DS battery. That offers so much more capacity. And okay, fine. You can cut these tabs off and shove this in and it fits just fine. And I mean they're they're basically the same size here. I mean, for all intents and purposes, they're the same battery. Tabs are the same, or the contacts are the same, etc. This is an 850 milliamp hour battery. This is a 600 milliamp hour battery. This battery tested at 577, I think, 572, 570 something milliamp hours. And um, let me uh, let me show you why using this battery is a dumb idea. All right, this battery by spec is supposed to be about 5.72 inch or 5.72 millimeters. We'll, we'll say it's probably 5.75 for the spec. If we measure it right in the middle here. We can see a little bit thicker than that. Yeah, this battery's bulging. This is no good to use. All right, well, that's fine. I have two more. Let's take a look at this one. Also out of a Nintendo DS, this one measured 660 milliamp hours. Okay, so that's better. That's certainly better than this one that only measured 567. Um, so what does that mean? An hour, maybe two, depending on how modded your Game Boy Advance is. Oh, but let's let's measure the thickness again. So the plastic frame, how thick it's supposed to be, 5.75, and let's just run that through the calipers. And look at that. That one's also bulging. Weird. It's almost like batteries that were manufactured 15 years ago tend to go bad. All right, but hang on. I, I, I hear you. Not all of them are swollen. And yes, I do actually have one that is not swollen. Believe me, it's surprised. Well, apparently it is a little swollen. I take that back. It's 5.89, but either way, it's not nearly as bad as the other ones, and it's still within spec that it fits without bulging. And this one did actually measure quite a bit higher at 799. So, okay, if you can find a good battery, go ahead. I'm sure it's fine. But one out of three, that's not good chances. So don't don't do this. This is. Don't do this unless you literally already have one and you know it's a good battery. Go with this. All right, now, last but not least, I want to talk about these cells. Now, these four batteries that I have here actually are brand new, to me at least. I don't know how newly manufactured they are because there's no dates on them or anything. Um, but these were actually sent my way uh, from Retro Game Repair Shop. He, uh, the, the owner of that shop, has a whole bunch of batteries that he sells, and, you know, he's gotten some complaints, understandably, and I have never recommended these. Um, I just, they're, they're not good. And anyway, he, he got in contact with me. He sent me a few. He said, hey, I have these batteries. Would you mind testing them out for me? Let me know how they turn out. And um, he actually sent me five. I ended up giving one away because one of them actually tested pretty decently. And it, I needed a battery for console I was selling. But I went ahead and wrote down the capacities here of all the batteries I tested. So this is the one I gave away because it was the one I tested first and I hadn't gotten to this one yet. Um, but I tested this 850 milliamp hour battery at 687 milliamp hours. Now, again, that's better than this, but that is a far cry from the 850 milliamp hours that they tell you you're getting versus something like this, where you're actually getting closer to the capacity, they say, or, or even this one. All right, this is the only decent one of the lot. Now, but let's, let's take a look at some of the other ones. 383. That's less than half of the advertised capacity. All right. 
I mean, I, I guess it's fine if your battery's like this and you shouldn't be using it because it's a little bit bulgy. It's fine, all right? Let's take a look at this one. 364, basically the same as the other one. Not great, but an option. Last but not least, this one. This is my favorite one here, because this one tested at 551. This is not the one I thought it was. I lost the one I thought I wanted to talk about. Anyway, this one tested at 551. So again, better than the other ones, um, but still a far cry from the 850 milliamp hour battery. So if you see these for sale anywhere, I highly recommend just pass, hard pass. Unless it's like two or three dollars, pass. These are not good cells. Now I've taken apart a few of these before. Oh, one more thing. I don't know what's up with these, but you can see the wrapping is just on there terribly. I had to actually peel this up and rewrap it on the one that I had uh, given away because the cell, the battery didn't even fit in the compartment. I had to unpeel this all the way around and then stretch it over so that it was nice and flush. The only thing these things are good for, in my opinion, take the wrap off, you salvage this frame, and this board in here that has the contacts, and you solder one of these to it. That's how you get a decent battery out of these. Hey, don't mind me, I'm just going to interject in my own video real quick because I just did something dumb and uh, instead of just showing you that, I want to show you the actual proper way, um, I think, to take these apart. So if you're trying to get this blue frame and uh, this little battery contact to make your own battery instead of getting one of these PCB drivers in here, which is perfectly fine, this actually makes for a cleaner result. Take this apart, you gotta peel the label off. It's pretty easy. They usually don't fight you on the way off. Just like that, and you can keep this if you want to wrap your new battery in it or just throw it out. It's garbage. Now, this part, very important that you do it properly, otherwise you might hurt yourself or blow yourself up. Um, I already hurt myself doing it the wrong way because I wasn't thinking about it. When you take this apart, do not start on this side. Start on this side. Very important you start away from the contact. You can just slide it out of the casing, push it to one side, and then the whole thing should lift out with the contact board intact. Now from here, you take your flush cutters, We'll cut one side, just like that, and the other side, just like that. Now you can take this battery and do whatever the hell you want with it. I highly suggest uh, recycling it at an authorized facility, which were we not under massive quarantine restrictions right now, I would suggest Best Buy. but. They are no longer accepting batteries for recycle, so I don't know what's going on with that. Um, but you'll have to look up your own local place anyway. But you can now peel these tabs off if you want. Save them, get rid of them, doesn't matter. Uh, I highly recommend actually insulating the battery too. I usually stick them in um, some blue tape just to cover all the contacts. But the reason we want to do it from the back side instead of the contact side is because when you're lifting up, this short contact can bend and contact the, um, the casing of the battery, and that will give you a really nasty burn that no one is going to like. Uh, so we'll take that, we'll, we'll recycle these two cells because I don't need either of them, and after well, this one I completely mishandled, and I'm not going to trust it anymore. And this one, I just was not very pleased with the actual capacity for the size of the cell, so I'm going to recycle that too. But now, 
I have two battery contact boards that I can save and two frames that I can save for future battery mods. Now if you want to actually install this battery, it's as simple as peeling back the foam on this side to desolder the rest of this nickel strip and then solder the wire to that and then on this side same thing desolder the rest of the nickel strip solder the wire to it if you peel the foam all the way off it's labeled on this side battery minus and then this side there will be a battery plus under the foam but I'm not going to peel the foam off or you can look at this side P plus P minus black wire to the minus red wire to the positive throw it back in the case it only goes the one way and then insert your battery Bob Jaunty alright back to the video where I freak out about burning myself and mishandling the battery you can see right here on my finger where um, it touched the uh, strip as it was shorting out against the uh, casing and uh, that, that's that's how hot it got that it just melted my skin it, it, it was it still hurts. I mean, it's it's little. I'll get over it, but don't don't fuck around with batteries. This is exactly why I always try and say don't fuck around with batteries. And then I went ahead and hurt myself doing exactly that. Um, but now that this is relatively safe, I'm still getting rid of this cell because once you short them out like that, it's uh, you know it's it stresses out the battery chemistry and it's. It's not good. This is this battery will prove to be very unreliable, I think, and that was not even counting the uh, origin of this thing. Just I mean, after shorting it out. But people that asked me how I did that other mod, well, you just want to salvage this. You desolder that strip there. You desolder this strip here and then you solder it on to your other battery. I don't have any more of these or I'd do that right now. Um, and you can see it's labeled on the front. So this side is the power negative. This side is the power positive. So red wire here, black wire here. And um, just pop it back in the case with the new cell and you should be good to go. Uh, but yeah. I'm sorry, I, I, that kind of freaked me out. I had to I had to end the battery. This thing is still warm. And, um, yeah, I guess I'm done now. Now I don't have anything else to say. So, thanks for watching, guys. Have a good night.